Before you do any labs, it's important for you to understand the safety rules so that you don't hurt yourself or cause someone else to be hurt. There are really only 10 laboratory safety rules, and most of them should make complete sense when you really think about them. So we're going to take a look at some of those and some of the safety equipment that we have in the lab so that when you're ready to do the laboratory, you're well informed. To start with, we're going to take a look at the safety rules. The number one rule is really the number one rule of life, and that's just to use common sense. That means no horseplay. Horseplay is a funny term. It sounds like horses are playing, but what it really means is don't fool around in the lab. Be aware that other people are around you. They may be carrying glassware or solutions, and you, you don't want to be bumping into them. Keep your area clean so that you're not constantly knocking things over or spilling or making a whole mess. And then when you're done, always clean up your area before you leave. In other words, you know that little voice in your head that says, oh, we probably shouldn't be doing this. Listen to that voice. Because if it says you probably shouldn't be doing it, you know what? You probably shouldn't be doing it. Please don't do anything in lab unless it's specifically designed as an experiment. Don't see what will happen if you mix things together. It's not going to be good. You want to make sure you learn the location and use of the safety equipment. Let's take a look at some of that now. I'm standing in front of some of the more important safety features in the lab. Um, what you see here is a safety shower, an eye wash, first aid kit, and just over here is the goggles cabinet, safety goggles cabinet. We already talked about wearing your safety goggles, but let's take a look at our safety shower and eye wash. Now, these are in case of chemical spills. Either you get chemicals all over your body or in your eyes. It's very important that you get to the safety shower or eye wash very quickly. If you don't, you could do permanent damage to yourself. Safety shower is very simple. You just stand underneath it, you pull this handle, and a huge amount of water comes down to soak you, to help dilute any chemicals that might be on your skin. It's important to take off the affected clothing that might have chemicals on it, holding it against your skin. So that's an important part of this. The eye wash is connected to the same water supply, and it looks kind of like a water fountain. You just have to pop these little caps off, and there's a little handle right here. And you can push the handle, and two streams of water will come out. You have to hold your eyes open and allow the streams of water to flush your eyes out. You've got to do that for about 15 minutes. It's very important that you get to the eye wash within 15 seconds. After about 15 seconds of exposure, you can do some permanent damage to your eyes. So it's very important to get there quickly. For minor cuts or burns, anything small, we have a first aid kit right here. You're welcome to come and grab uh, band-aids or whatever out of there. Just make sure that it doesn't spill because it's attached to the wall. And finally, the goggles cabinet, which you will be wearing any time we do a lab. You'll be wearing some goggles, and uh, this is where they go. They can be disinfected by ultraviolet light. There's a little lamp up in here that allows them to be uh, disinfected once we're done using them. So those are the safety features in this corner of the room. What you're looking at here is called a fume hood. Uh, a fume hood is sort of like a cabinet with a glass door on the front. And if you listen, you can hear the air moving in here. There's a vacuum system inside this fume hood. So anytime you have some sort of chemistry glassware or experiment that is producing fumes that are toxic, you want to do that under the fume hood here so that the fumes get sucked out through the air exchangers. A very important piece of safety device or safety equipment that we have here in the lab. So of course you all know what this is. This is our fire extinguisher. It's right by the door of the classroom. In general you shouldn't have to use this, but if you do, it's pretty simple. You take it off the wall, you pull the pin, you point the hose at the base of the fire, and you squeeze the handle. And it'll discharge pretty quickly. So 
do make sure that uh, you're pointing at the base of the fire, otherwise things get a little bit uh, not so safe. The other piece of safety equipment in this classroom is a fire blanket. It's designed to help put out a fire. It's made of flame retardant material. It's designed to help put out a fire that's on somebody if they happen to catch fire in their clothing. You uh, pull on the strap here, the blanket comes out, you wrap it around the person and uh, smother the flames. Has never had to be, be used in my entire time here at Edgewood, so I'm not expecting that it's going to have to be, but if it is, it's right by the door of the room and you'll, you'll be able to see it pretty easily. One of the most important pieces of safety equipment that we have in the lab are your safety goggles. Now, it is a state law that when you're doing an experiment, you have to wear approved safety goggles. Uh, glasses won't do it. Okay, They have to be the wraparound that cover your entire eye. Now, it's important to know that vapors can still kind of get in there. And if you're wearing contact lenses underneath your goggles, sometimes those vapors can cause problems with your contact lenses. So please don't wear contacts. Uh, if you have to wear contacts, then please have your parents send a note in saying it's okay. You've got to wear appropriate clothing when you do labs. Well, what's appropriate clothing? Well, the first thing is you want your feet to be covered, so closed-toed shoes are a must. You don't want any loose or flowing clothing, especially if you're dealing with solutions or flames that, because they might dip into the solution or get caught in the flame. It's best to wear natural fibers. If you wear a lot of artificial fibers like rayon or nylon uh, and you're using certain types of organic solvents, they might melt. If you have long hair, make sure that when you're using a Bunsen burner that you tie it back. Hair burns really fast and especially if you have product in it, it burns uh, completely. So you don't want to lose your hair simply because you forgot a scrunchie. This should be an obvious one. You're doing chemistry experiments with chemicals. You shouldn't be eating or drinking anything in lab. That means no chewing gum, no eating candy, and that means even when you're just working at the lab benches, if there's something going on experiment-wise in the lab, you shouldn't have anything in your mouth. That means if you chew on your pen, you want to not do that either. When you're done with an experiment, it's always a good idea to wash your hands. You don't want to leave the lab with something, some sort of chemical on your hands and then go off to lunch and ingest some chemicals. It's not safe. So wash your hands. If you need to go to the restroom to do that, by all means, go. If you spill something, you hurt yourself, even if it's a minor scratch, you break something, or there's a fire, please tell me. You're not going to get in trouble unless you try to hide it. And with injuries, you've got to be careful, because if you scratch yourself with a piece of broken glass or something, and there's a chemical on there, it could get irritated. It could be a bad situation. So please, tell me about anything that happens. If I need your attention, it usually means it's something important. Safety rule violations or reminders, disposal information, or something that you need to be aware of. So when I try to get your attention, please safely stop what you're doing listen to me quietly. And finally, always dispose of chemicals properly. Don't throw it down the sink unless I tell you you can throw it down the sink. Sometimes we can't put stuff into the groundwater supply and we need to keep it separate. I'll let you know with each lab where things need to be put when you're done and just make sure that you do that. Don't get lazy. That's really all there is to it. Make sure that you summarize these safety rules in your notes. Make sure you do the whisk. If there are anything that you didn't understand, any confusion, please make that your question. Otherwise, we'll see you in lab.